everybody, my name is Amelia. Welcome to Youth Group. We are so glad you're joining us today. Before we start, make sure to share the link in the description below with three people that you know. Invite them to our service. It'll be really fun today. Um, also make sure to check in in the comments and just say hello because we'd love to hear from you. We have a really exciting schedule tonight. We have Zoe Arthur with some recommendations. And then we also have the Yeagers with a fun game. And after that, John will be sharing a really cool message. And then that will be followed by Samuel with announcements. And lastly, some of our awesome leaders will be doing a Minute to Win it challenge. So don't miss that. A little later on tonight, we will be giving away a unicorn tie-dye kit that Nohea recommended last week. So don't miss that. Should be really fun. And finally, we will be having our second ever large group Zoom gathering, so don't miss that. It'll be really fun. Um, we'll get to check in with each other and see each other's faces. And that'll be tonight, right after the group, and there'll be more details about that later. So before we start, I was going to share a verse with you all today, and we'll also be hearing a little more about this verse later on. And this verse is Jeremiah um, 31, 33, and it reads, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And now without further ado, let's get started with our service. Welcome back to another episode of the Major Family Jeopardy. Today's contestants will be Mom and Dad. Oh, give it up for them. Yeah. Pleasure to have you guys here. And we're going to begin. We have uh, four categories tonight. Those categories are Jesus, The Office, Geography, and let me check on our last one, Star Wars. Oh, All right. Yeah. Okay. So. They will be using their convenient buzzer switch and their spoons, okay? And uh, we're gonna go with a nice uh, Rochambeau for who gets to go first. Alright, here we go. Alright, Molly's gonna go first, alright. Okay, Mom. Yeah. Uh, oh, we also have one daily go, just so you guys know. Okay. Mom, uh, oh, we also have 200, 300, 400, and 500, so four total. Okay? Mm -hmm. Per pattern. We don't have to use them all, but Three, yeah. Okay. All right, Mom, what would you like first? I would like geography for 300. Geography for 300. Which country has the longest coastline in the world? Mm. Okay, we have Mom here. The United States. That is incorrect. Dad, what do you like to steal? Yeah, so, oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. oh. What Can is the United States? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is format? Still incorrect, sorry about that. <laughs> Always what is though, all right, now we know. Dad, we like to steal? What is Australia? That is incorrect. The correct answer is Russia. Canada. Uh, when did you go over that, Dad? What would you like? What you Ge kind of geography for 100. Uh, we're going to go 200 because there's no 100. All right, two, make it 200. Geography for 200. What is the largest desert in the world? We're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. Huh? <laughs> the Sahara. That is incorrect. Mom? The Gobi Desert. That is also incorrect. Both of those are, all, both of those are also not in what is for me. Uh, but, but the correct answer is Antarctica. Oh, Arctic desert. Technically, Sahara is the hottest desert, but Antarctica is the most space. Mm. You know, so far, we're still at a zero zero. Right? No money to donate. But uh, we're going to go back to mom for the third question. Okay. We have to donate this money? What money? Oh. <laughs> okay. um, I'll take uh, the office for 200. Ooh, the office for 200. All right. What line of work is Bob Vanson? Alright, are you ready? What is insurance? Oh my goodness, this is this is an easy one, guys. Bob Vance? Paper sales? No, uh, <laughs> uh trucking, trucking. Sorry, I'm trucking. Bob Vance? <laughs> Vance refrigeration. Oh, 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 oh. Alright. Uh, we're gonna take over from mom. What would we like? Uh we'll stick oh, with the Dad? Yeah. Stick with the office <laughs> for an increment. I'm gonna go 300. Thank All right. you. Let's see if they can get this one. What type of farm does Dwight own? I have that. Alright, we're gonna go on. It's a beef farm. A beef farm is uh, correct. Uh, uh. What, what is, is a beef farm? farm? We're gonna give it to her. We're gonna give it to her. Alright, alright. We're gonna uh, keep it with mom. Congratulations on the last one. Alright. I'll take a. Uh... Congratulations on the first correct answer of the game. What was the first category? Uh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus for 200. Jesus for 200. 
What is the name of Samson's girl? Look at that. What is? Delilah. Delilah is correct. We're gonna go to the next one for down people with you. What would we like? Uh, I'd like to know that that did not have to do with Jesus. But we're going, <laughs> we're going Jesus for 300. It's mostly Bible, actually. The oh, Bible. Bible. Okay. okay. For 300. Okay. How many chapters are in the book of Revelations? Okay. What is? 23. Oh, so close. So close. Back to Mama, see if you can steal this one. I think it's the book of Revelation. And what is? And what is 22? 22 is correct. 300 and 200. No, I have 500. 500 to 300. 600. That's what I said. 600 to 200. All right. We're going to go back to Mom. Uh, we have some more questions up. We haven't hit up Star Wars, just if you guys want that. Thank Mom for reminding me. Uh, Bible slash Jesus for the next increment. 400, that's our daily double! Oh! This is also a very tricky one. Okay. Uh, where do you go? What is the shortest book in the Bible? And what is the longest? Double answer. What is the shortest book? What is Philemon? And the longest book, what is Psalms? Both of those are incorrect. <laughs> Where do you go to mom? It's, it's a little bit of a tricky one for longest oh. because it's not in terms of like pages, like not it's space. Chapters? It's like most words and ver like most words. Thanks for the after my after. Hey, I, it's a daily double. If you give me any cheapies, all right. Where do you go to mom? Okay. For shortest. I'll give you a hint, it's Old Testament. Yeah, I'm thinking one of those little prophets. Mm. The minor prophets. Mm, minor prophets. Um, All right, here we go, come on. I know. Uh, well, shorter than third John. Shorter than third John. <laughs> I couldn't believe it either when I picked it up. Oh, man. I need that refresher on those old names. Five, four, three. Obadiah. Obadiah, okay. And then the longest. Uh, numbers. Oh, Obadiah was the shortest book. But the longest book. In terms of like verses and words, Jeremiah. God. So that guy wrote a like lot. Fifty percent so. or half a uh, half? Sure, we'll give you. Uh, it was, what's oh, it say? Sure. What's it say about the scripture? All right, we're going to our next question. The longest <laughs> book is scolding us the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was a hard one to get through. Bad one. All right, what's the next one we're going to I don't know, but technically, Saul does in the chapter. What are you going to go for the next one? Uh, we'll stick with Bible Jesus for five hundred. Okay, this is the last one in Bible categories. We have. What island was Paul shot on? Okay. What is Patmos? That is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> you want, do you want to steal? I, just, I hear the sound. Me, 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 me. No one knows the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. What is Crete? Can I get some more? Sure. sure. Uh, Lesbos. That is incorrect. <laughs> one more, you want more uh, Yeah. What is. Kawhi. <laughs> close, close, close. Correct answer was Malta. Oh, uh, good job. I mean, bad job. Hey, we're going to go with our last question. We, we, do you want to go Star Wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Star Wars for 200. Star Wars for 200. We're going to go with what species is Yoda? Ooh, ooh. True Star Okay. What is Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> no die. <is> the <laughs> okay, that do you want to steal? What is midichlorian midichlorian? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be six for you. That is also incorrect. The correct answer. Trick question. Unknown. Oh. But because that was a bad one. No we're wonder. Gonna, we we're gonna go with one more. Okay. Uh, Mama's commanding leave eleven hundred to two hundred. Sorry, rubbing in death. But Star Wars. Star Wars for four hundred. Four hundred. We're gonna go with. Who kissed Leia first? What is Luke? Luke oh! is correct for who kissed Leia first. Not Leia with her because that's his sister. But. Kind of gross. Yeah, but she kissed, <laughs> he kissed her before Han did, so it was all Thankfully, it's just one. Just one kiss. Alright, I think we're going to give this one to mom tonight. Woo! Uh, we'll be back again. Maybe. Sign off for now. Hey Josh, what's going on man? Hey Miles, quarantine has been treating me well, and I've been able to get rid of a lot of the stress I've been carrying from school now that AP tests are over. Cool, cool. I have two quick questions for you. First one is this, if you have super speed, 
Does it take the same time to run across the world since everything is in slow motion? From your own perspective, I'd have to say yes. Given that your brain is able to process your surroundings quickly enough to perceive them in slow motion, it would also have to perceive time in a likewise fashion. Nice. I would say superheroes like Quicksilver definitely take the same amount of time to run because like everything is slow motion for them. My second question is this, why should whales be fish and not mammals? Why do you think whales don't eat fish? Because they aren't cannibalistic. In the same way Shaq's still human, whales are still fish. That's so good, Josh. That's a good answer. I would say, yeah, like you can't compare a cow and a whale and a fish and say that a whale is more closely related to a cow. Get out of here. All right. I hear you have some Bible verses for us, Josh. Yeah, I do. The verse I have comes from the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Here, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that the confidence and assurance of faith is not blind belief or gullibility or wishful thinking. Later on in the chapter, the writer mentions various people throughout the history of the Bible and shows that they all had good reasons to trust in God. Their faith was not naively accepting fairy tales, but rather, it was acting in full confidence that God would do as he had promised. So then, for us, what does it mean to have faith in God? To better understand this, I want to look at Christianity as a whole. I believe Christianity is your relationship with Jesus. So, what is required in any good, caring, and loving relationship? Two things that are arguably the most fundamental in such a relationship are mutual affection and trust. God has shown time and time again that he will care for his people. What then is left for us to do? This is where faith comes into play. As I mentioned earlier, this faith is not blind belief. This faith is trusting God will continue to care for his people and to care for you as he has been doing for all eternity. That's so good. I like how that gives you a concrete outline of what faith looks like. Personally, what effect has knowing that verse and that definition of faith done for you? So this is actually a verse I've struggled with a lot over the past few years. As a kid, I learned at church that God loves us always, and that was fine and dandy until I faced hardships in life. Naturally, in tough times, it's sometimes difficult to see God's goodness working anywhere. I began to question Him and my faith. I began to ask myself, how do I continue to hold on to my faith and trust that God is doing good while everything around me looks so bleak? Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is assurance in what we do not see. I'm not God. I'm not omniscient, these I know for certain. This verse has helped me realize that there's more to life than what happens in front of my eyes. And for these things I cannot see, I must trust that God is doing good and that he is keeping his promises. This is why it is important to have faith in the bleakest of times. They say that God's power is made strongest in our weakness. And through this verse, I know that my faith isn't blind since I'm trusting in the God who has shown time and time again that he cares for me. Love that. Well, thanks for joining us, Josh. Take care. Bye, everybody. Yes. Now I'm passing it on to, to Zoe. No, I'm not. I'm just pranking. Hi, I'm Zoe. I'm doing the suggestion suggest 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 category. This is for Netflix TV shows. If you have Netflix, make sure to watch these. So the first one is Malibu Rescue. It's about four kids who are spending their summer training for an elite junior lifeguard program. The next one is Sam and Cat. It's about two teenage girls named Sam and Cat who become friends from a mishap by a garbage truck and soon they start a babysitting service. The next one is the Expanding universe of Ashley Garcia. It is about a 15 year old girl named Ashley Garcia who moves across the country to persuade in her career of robotics. The next one is The Healing Powers of Jude. So, this is about a dog who helps a boy named Noah get through middle school. And the last one is Victorious. Victorious is a show about very gifted students who go to a school in Hollywood named Hollywood Arts. They all become fast friends. Bye!
Hey students, I'm so glad that you have hung out with us today. We're about to transition to a time of worship. So I wanna encourage you uh, to sing along, think about the words, reflect on who God is and what he's done for us. If you don't know the words, they'll be right there on the screen for you. And one truth I wanna leave you with is that God delights in your worship. He's worthy of your worship. So worship unhindered and glorify him for who he is. Let's go ahead and get started. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested in my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you released from my chains I'm a prisoner no more my shame was a ransom he faithfully bore he canceled my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. Hey students, it's John. Uh, today we're actually starting a new series called The Greatest Commands, where we're going to be flipping through this book and kind of identifying a few commands that God has given us uh, to follow him and to trust him. And when you, usually when you think about commands, usually you think of something negative, something commanding you to do something, telling you, even though you don't want to. Uh, fun fact about the Bible, there are actually 1,000, around 1,050 commands in the New Testament. And that's kind of a lot. That can be overwhelming. Uh, especially when it comes to us wanting to be faithful. We want to follow all of the commands. We want to trust God. 
uh, but yet at the same time, it just feels like how in the world can we do it? How can we be successful in trusting Jesus? Usually when you think about commands, what do you think of? Uh, love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. But we're actually not going to be talking about either of those two things. We're going to be talking about uh, different ones. Commands are important. They, they can actually save our lives. I remember this one story. It wasn't a life or death story. Uh, when I was younger, maybe I was about like seven years old and my sister was one year older, so she was about eight. And somebody gifted us with uh, this lamp. I don't really know why, FYI. Old lamps, terrible gift for people, uh, but they gave it to us and my grandma told us, whatever you do, do not plug in that lamp. And so me being, you know, innocent, trusting, following the rules, you know how I am, I chose not to, but my sister on the other hand, the rebel, uh, she was like, hey, we should plug this in. I was like, no, we shouldn't. It sounds like a terrible idea. And she was like, yeah, we should. And then I was like, okay, then we should. And so we decided to plug in this lamp. And right when we plugged it in, it short circuited the whole house and all the lights went off. And I could hear my grandma running to our room, yelling at us and asking, did you plug in that lamp? And then I, I started crying and we got yelled and we got in trouble. Uh, but following commands are important and they're important because they can help us and they can heal us. Usually when we think about God's commands, we think, oh, he doesn't want us to have any fun or oh, he's a prude or oh, he just doesn't get it. But God actually gives us commands to give us freedom and to give us life. And as you know, there's a dichotomy of what you hear in the world versus what the Bible says and what the Bible commands, right? For example, just one quick one. Uh, the world tells you do whatever you want for you and yourself, whatever it is to get ahead, whatever it is to move forward, do that. But what the Bible says is carry each other's burdens, love one another, put others above yourselves. And those two things you would think are opposites and they are. And so you have to choose, am I going to choose the world's way or am I going to choose God's way? And we found out time and time again that actually it's more blessed to give than to receive. You just feel better when you're giving gifts than when you're receiving things. It's just how we were wired and how we were created. So when God says, carry each other burdens, he's really saying, like, that's actually gonna help you if you're caring for others instead of selfishly thinking about yourself. And our theme verse for our whole series is Jeremiah 30, 1, 33. And we're gonna unpack this next week, so I'm not really gonna hang out in it too much today. It says this, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people. Uh, when you think about commands, when was the first time that God gave us or his people commands to follow? Go ahead and think about it. If you guess the 10 commandments, right? The tablets that he wrote the commandments on, you're right. And those are one time where God gave people commands and which were to follow. So what we're gonna do is we're going to flip all the way back to the Old Testament and, and talk about one of those 10 commandments. And the 10 commandments we're gonna talk about today is God has commanded us to rest. It's important to know that rest is different than resting in the Lord. Uh, whenever Sarah takes a nap here at home uh, and she wakes up, she always says this phrase that uh, it was just, it was great resting in the Lord, right? That's what she calls her naps, is just resting in the Lord, which is true. And so we're gonna unpack that. We're gonna talk about uh, what it means to be lazy and what does it mean to really rest in God? Is that a thing? Or is it not a thing? We're going to talk about biblically what that is. If you're thinking, why should I listen to this message on rest when all I've been, I have been doing is resting? I want to encourage you and challenge you to stick with us and you're going to learn something because resting is different than resting in the Lord. So let's learn how to rest in the Lord and everything that we do and be built up. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11 say this. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male or female servants nor your animals nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in the days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. So God's command for you and me is to rest. In those verse, we know that God has called us to rest. So today we're going to talk about three quick points of what rest means, what it doesn't mean. And then we're going to talk about how exactly do we rest in the Lord starting tonight, starting tomorrow. How do we do that? 
And so the first thing that I want to remind us is rest inherently is important and it's good for our bodies and God commands it. And the rest of doing nothing, kind of unplugging for a little bit. First Kings chapter 19 verses three through five say this, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush sat under it and prayed that he might die. So Elijah was having such a rough day, all he wanted to do was just die. I don't know about you, have you ever just felt overwhelmed, or tired, or exhausted, we're just kind of done for the day? I think that's where Elijah was at this point. And it goes on and he tells God this, I have had enough, Lord, he said, take my life, I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the bush and fell asleep. Sometimes it's good to just fall asleep or to eat a snack. God has commanded us to rest our bodies. He didn't create us to be energizer bunnies. God didn't design us for that. He didn't create us for that. Oftentimes I think, imagine how much in this world I can do if I just didn't sleep for six to eight hours a day. I can do so much, but God designed us to rest because he knows we need to be refueled and refilled every single day. So if you're going 100 miles an hour, stop rest rest relax let your body catch up to how fast you're going this past week on thursday i painted the fence in front of my house uh shout out miles thanks for coming and coming by and helping uh so him and i painted the fence for about two hours uh he then left uh, he was too tired i guess uh, and then i had a phone call with a friend for about an hour uh, and so what happened then after that i then painted for another hour and a half uh, so it was kind of a long day. I was kind of exhausted physically. It was hot outside. I was exhausted emotionally because I was talking with my friend for an hour and he was just kind of unloading things that's going on in his life. And I'm so glad I was able to be there for him. And then I went back to painting just to finish the first coat. And then after that, all of that, I had paint everywhere on me because I'm not a great painter. I get more paint on me than I do on the thing I'm painting. And so then I had to clean up and all I wanted to do for the rest of the day was nothing. And I think it was okay that I chose to do nothing. I mean, still, I did maybe things that I shouldn't have done, but I decided to rest that day, even though there were things that I knew I needed to do, but I decided that I'm going to rest uh, after taking on that big job. And I think it's the same thing for you and me. God has commanded us to rest. A few ways that I find rest. One, as you guys know, I play Pokemon Go, shout out. Uh, I just find rest in it. It's just a way to unplug. Another way lately that I've been finding rest is on Netflix. I've been watching the show called Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, which is really great. I watched it many, many years ago and it's kind of cool to see again. But what's interesting about it is when I wake up after I'm ready, to, after I get ready for my day, I'll kind of watch a few episodes and unplug a little bit uh, and just do nothing with my brain, which is good sometimes. And so I find rest in doing that. So whatever kind of you find rest in, whether it's walks or journaling, do those things and find rest and let your body refuel that's healthy and that's important but don't do things that are actually not fueling your body and are harming your body uh the second thing that i want to talk about today is identifying what's being lazy and what's resting there are two verses i want to talk about in the book of proverbs the first verse is proverbs 26 15 and it says this a sluggard buries his hand in the dish he is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. I don't know about you, but have, are you in charge of a specific chore, like maybe taking out the trash? Instead of taking out the trash when you need to, you take out the trash, you wait until like it's a mountain of trash before you take it out. Is that laziness or is that resting? And I say that one because that's actually what I do. I wait till the trash and Sarah doesn't like it. I wait till it's like really full or high up in order to toss it and that's just being lazy. So identify what's being lazy and what's resting. The second verse in Proverbs that I want to talk to you about is Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13. It says this, A sluggard says there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. What that's talking about is excuses. Uh, and back in that day, there were not lions just hanging out in the street roaming. But when people had things to do, they would say, You know what? If I leave the house, what if a lion kills me? You know, what if this? What if that? What if this? We can't live our life with excuses. God has called us to action, to do, to be representatives of who he is and what he has us for. So don't make excuses in your life and get things done, right? Rest 
but I identify when there are times of, hey, I'm actually not resting, I'm just being lazy, and I need to get up and I need to go. Um, whether that's waking up early, going to sleep earlier, uh, being committed in the things you need to do, but resting in Jesus doesn't mean having your whole day doing nothing. The third thing that I wanna to talk to you about today is resting in Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verses 18 through 20, some of my favorite verses say this. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Resting in Jesus means following Jesus, going to him, talking to him, trusting him. Uh, that's with all of the things that we have going on. When your spiritual tank is, is empty, go to Jesus, right? He can carry you and he wants to carry your burdens. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God cares for you and he wants you to go to him. He wants you to rest in him and not in other things. So when you're exhausted, instead of your first automatic response being couch, Netflix, or food, friends, or social media, texting, let it be Jesus, then everything else. Go to the Lord. Come to me, all who are where you're in burden, and I will give you rest. There's a right way to rest, and there's a wrong way to rest. Choose the right way. Choose to rest in Jesus and watch him be with you and heal you and comfort you and give you this peace that you otherwise wouldn't understand. Three ways that we can rest in Jesus are the following. One is stop going 100 miles an hour. Right? We all do a lot and we can fill up our time with a lot and a lot, but God didn't call us to do those things. Uh, we need to trust in him that the time that we have is valuable and we're going to trust him and not go 100 miles an hour. Because when you go 100 miles an hour, you're missing a lot of things. So slow down, stop and rest in who he is. The second way is to identify areas of laziness and correct those, right? If I'm being too lazy, I just need to correct those and I need to rest. I need to rest in Jesus the right way. And the third way is this. Instead of filling your rest time with things, fill it with Jesus. God has called us to rest. Come to me. Or you have six days of work on the seventh rest, but rest in the Lord. Don't do anything on those days and just trust in me. Spend time with me and you will be filled. Uh, the Christian life is all about this like crazy dichotomy thing, right? More of Jesus actually means more rest. But less of Jesus and more stuff is less rest, right? Jesus has called us come and die to sell and you find life. If you try to find your own life, you will actually lose it and you'll die. So trust in Jesus, trust his word, and trust his commands that he is for you, he is with you, and he wants you to find rest, but find rest the right way. By reading your Bible, by praying, by doing spiritual disciplines, by serving others, by caring for others, and know that God commands us these things because he loves us, and he's for us, and he's with us. Love you guys. Find rest in Jesus this week. Hey guys, it's Samuel Pappas here for your closing announcements. Uh, one thing that I've been doing uh, recently is to read great books, whether they are uh, biographies or novels or historic pieces of literature. Uh, books are a great way to go places in a time that we can't really uh, go on vacation or things like we usually would. Uh, they also improve your vocabulary and you can learn about a ton of different things in a short period of time. So I would definitely recommend uh, checking out a book, either from your parents, from your siblings, just one line around the house that you haven't read. Uh, they are a great um, way to spend your time. Uh, our first announcement is Fortnite night. Uh, every Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. we have Fortnite night. So if you want to play Fortnite uh, or you want to learn how to play Fortnite or just spend some time with some gamers, uh, reach out to John and we'll be doing that every Wednesday. Secondly, we have our Bible study and girl study groups. Uh, if you're a high school uh, girl or boy, then you should definitely get involved with one of these groups. They're a great way to uh, do life together and to talk about our lives, talk about God. Um, girl study goes on at 11 a.m. on Sundays every week, and Bible study goes on at uh, 6.30 p.m. on Mondays every single week. So if you want to get involved with any of those things, uh, please talk to John. We are ready to accept you and we really want you to do that. It's a great way to spend your time as well. I'm so glad that you guys have uh, stayed through youth group um, for the duration. And uh, just remember that youth group is 
going on every Tuesday at 6.30 right here on YouTube. And we'll be, we will be having free prizes next week, so that's definitely one that you want to attend. Uh, be sure to invite your friends. Be sure to uh, watch it as a family, whatever, whatever you like to do. Uh, just come here next week at 6.30. Alright, we're going to pray. Uh, God, thank you so much for this opportunity where we get to, um, even if it's not with uh, other people, that we get to spend time as close as we can and we get to learn about you. Please help, the, please help us to keep the lessons that we've learned uh, in our lives and not just forget about them in a few days or weeks or whatever it may be. And we thank you that we live in an area that we can do this and that we have computers and phones and internet access so that we will be able to uh, stay as close as we can in quarantine. Uh, right now, right now, right now, right after youth group, we have our large Zoom gathering. So we're gonna get in a big, uh, big Zoom with everyone and then we're gonna split off into uh, Zooms for high school and middle school and we'll be playing games, talking about the message and talking about life. So you definitely want to hop on the Zoom right after this until about maybe eight. So see you in Zoom and have an awesome week.